well, we've been rifling through the post bag all week. Took us a couple of days to get through Jeff's fan mail. Is it, is it wise to scale down risk just before you're about to retire on a drawdown pension? We've got a, Chris, a question in here from Chris, who's asking about the rewards that True Potential has offered. We're back. It's another True Potential Do More With Your Money podcast. This is episode 83 this week. We are cracking on through them and we've got another cracking one for you today as well. We've been rifling through the post bag all week. Took us a couple of days to get through Jeff's fan mail, but once we did, we found a lot of great questions in there from you. And a great question, of course, needs a great answer. So to help with that, Jeff Casson's in the house this week. Welcome, Jeff. Thank you. Good to see you. Uh, he made his debut on the podcast last week. He enjoyed it so much. He's back again. In fact, when I say back, what I really mean is he's never left. He's been sat in the chair all week uh, in a kind of Extinction Rebellion style sit down protest. He's been refusing to leave. We came in this morning, put the lights on and there he was. So we've let him stay. It's Neil uh, twice in a row. Rainer, Thank good you. to see you, Neil. Thank you. Welcome back. And uh, speaking of debuts, uh, we do like a debutante on the podcast this week. Uh, so our, our special guest is Muslima. Are you very welcome, Thank Muslima? You. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Are you, uh, are you excited for your first Super podcast? Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, in a bit of a true potential tradition for a debutante on the podcast, it's your first time on the podcast. What else have you done this week for the very first um, time? I wanna, actually, it was my birthday yesterday. Oh, yes. well, happy oh, birthday. I had a Thai massage for the very first time and Ooh. it was amazing. So definitely. If we'd known, ended. Jeff would have baked a cake. <laughs> 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 And, uh, well, it's, it's good to see you, and it's good to see all of you. Has everyone had a good... Actually, Neil, I'm not going to ask you what's the first... Or what have you done for the first time this week, because that could take us anywhere. Mm. Uh, but what's especially the best thing? We, especially if we're talking about time massages. Well, absolutely right, yes. Yeah. That's a bit of a pastime of yours, that one. Mm -hmm. um, what's the best thing you've done this week? The best thing I've done this week is um, pretty boring, actually, but I got a quick 5K time. So, yeah, I mm. ran 22 minutes, 34 seconds, very which is good. very good for an old man. Is yeah. that the fastest time so far? Yes, the Excellent. fastest time so far. I think it's because I've bought new trainers. That'll be it. So Always the new trainers. Mm. Uh, are, are you in training for anything or are you just... No, unfortunately I'm not. I was going to do the Great North Run, but I'm actually off because it's my birthday, so I'm, I've got a week off. So oh, that's, a, yeah. that's not a great excuse to be. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. But um, might do it next year. It's not, a, it's not a real Great North Run this year, is it? They do sort of back end loop they don't do the full course so is that, that's, yeah. that's why you're not I'd rather do in doing that. One, yeah. oh well good uh, Jeff uh, we'll, we'll come to you in a second for the markets but um, uh, how's your week been has it been a, another been a busy week, one in yeah. investment management what's it's been happening busy week a lot happening in investment management as always yes um, different things happening markets doing different things good doing different things with their managers so that's all been good well it's good yeah. to know you're on top of it I haven't checked my pension for a, a week or so so if I do Tell us how the markets have been this week. What am I going to see? We've well, seen, hopefully, that it's went up a little bit, but markets have generally just been moving sideways Good. this week. Typical sort of holiday fashion. Yeah. Um, August is usually a quieter period in markets. It's certainly evident at the moment, albeit you've seen a number of markets making new all-time highs, so S&P, NASDAQ, all-time highs. So it continues to, to gradually move higher. Um, big focus this week is today. Um, what's happening in the US, there's a big economic symposium where effectively there's been an expectation that we'll hear from the Federal Reserve as to how they're thinking about changing their quantitative easing, the quantitative support programmes that they've had in place since last February and March. That expectation has evolved over the past couple of weeks, primarily because of COVID, Delta variant, and how that is impacting certain states in the US where, if you look at it, there's a number of states that haven't moved forward with vaccination programs as fast as others and they're certainly seeing a bit of an impact from mm -hmm. rising delta cases some areas if you look at texas florida etc quite high rates of mm -hmm. infection and in some of the the higher frequency economic data that you can look at whether it's restaurant bookings flight data etc you can see a bit of a tail off in, mm -hmm. in the recovery trend so it's a bit of an interesting challenge for, for Jerome Powell today as to how he either talks about potentially the negatives in terms of what's happening from a, a slower uh, pace of, of reopening, if you want to call it that, versus a need to step away from the, the support programmes that they have in place, which mm. are very significant and have the, you know, you could argue are distorting how the market is, is behaving. So delicate balancing act for him today, but mm. that's kind of where everybody's really been, been focusing on. 
economics over the, the past week has generally fed into a similar sort of view to that. The likes of Germany, the Eiffel business survey there shows a bit of a, a rollover in, in expectations, um, particularly around just the, the re speed of reopening. So some, some mixed messages, shall we say, from economics over the course of this week. But then at the end of the day, we couldn't keep going faster and faster and faster. It had yeah. to, to roll over at some point in time, and that's yeah. what we're starting to see coming through. And, and just thinking domestically in the UK, and I think particularly of note, has it sort of jumped out this week? Or? Yeah, it just, I suppose, a couple of the, the ongoing trends that we've discussed in, in this. If you look at the UK car production, I thought that was quite a fascinating mm -hmm. thing this week. When you look at the, the challenge that the auto companies have seen, particularly in July, we've talked on, on these podcasts about the challenges of, of semiconductors and that impacting production trends. What also we saw for July was the, the pandemic impact in yeah. terms of the, the auto manufacturers just not having staff mm -hmm. and the real challenge that they had of, of producing mm -hmm. uh, autos over the course of the, the yeah. week, so, or sorry, the month of July, I should say. Mm. There was some news out today I saw this morning about um, high streets and particularly department stores that we've, we've obviously some of the big names have, have either reduced the number of yeah. uh, stores they have or, or disappeared in some cases altogether over the last few years. And just a little bit of talk around um, the, again, the changing nature of the high street, you know, yeah. off go your department stores, income hotels. We've probably all been up and down high streets and seen, yeah. you know, fairly uh, uh, well known hotels sprouting up in what used to be department stores. Is that a is that a shift? You know, is 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 retail yeah. if you like moving away from that and hospitality moving in? Is that is that where we're going? Possibly. I thought it was quite an interesting report. It just talks about the challenges of of retail and the high street retail and how over what is it the past five years? I think mm -hmm. I looked at how the department stores had just yeah vanished effectively um, so is it a change well probably all of us don't go into department stores mm. you know that's probably the, the way to think about it and if that's a representative sample that's what's going to be happening up and down the high street so mm. we've all gradually moved online we saw that last year very significantly but when we look at retail sales data over the course of this year you haven't seen that change back you've seen online stay at a relatively high number mm. of, mm. of total retail sales so yeah. at the end of the day it looks as if we're not going back to, mm. to shopping in physical stores. Mm. Or if you are, you go in and you have a look at something, you yeah. don't buy it. Well, if you are, you, you might go and find there's a, there's a hotel now in a bowling alley. Yeah. So uh, yeah. good, good luck finding the suit you wanted. Clearly, I couldn't find mine today. <laughs> um, right, let's. Uh, I, I mentioned at the start we're going to do questions today. We've had a lot of questions come in. Uh, Muslim, I meant to ask before, because we, we get about 10 million viewers and listeners for the podcast each week. So, uh, <laughs> uh, a, 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 you know, and a growing audience. For people who haven't met you, um, let, tell us uh, what you do at True Potential and how long you've been doing it. Um, so I'm a team leader within the customer care team. I've been at True Potential for two and a half years, um, starting within the, the customer care team and yeah. then progressing on to be a, a team leader. Um, I lead a, a group of client managers within the team and yeah. we assist um, clients who are serviced by a head office, um, as well as wealth management clients. Mm. And do you enjoy it? Yeah, I love it. It's great. What's the, we might need to cut this bit out depending on what you say, but... Uh, What's the weirdest question you've ever had? Uh, oh. <laughs> I don't know. Um. <laughs> That's a very diplomatic, it's obviously a very good one, Neil. It's obviously yes. a very good one, but a diplomatic response there from Muslima. So thank you for that one. You've saved the podcast. Um, <laughs> let's get into the first one then. This is a guy uh, called James who's written in. So thank you for your question, James. Uh, when you log in, is, James is asking, when you log into your pension accounts, is it possible to see uh, your monthly contributions going in? Obviously, you can see the total value, but can you also see the monthly contributions um, going certainly. in? Certainly. There is actually a feature on the, the client site where you can see your transaction history. So mm -hmm. if you were to sort of log into your account using your, your desktop version or an app, um, you'd simply just select your chosen policy, scroll yeah. down to the very bottom and search your transaction history. What's unique about it is you can search for your direct debits um, as well as any sort of um, periodic fees. Um, mm -hmm. Any sort of contributions as well would also pop up. Um, you can also contact the, the customer care team and we'd be more than happy to sort of sample you to the, 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 the actual transaction history yeah. or provide you a list of contributions. Yeah. Do, do you log in much, Neil? Are you, are you, in, are you always looking I'm your... always on the app. Yeah, I good. think we ran a report to see who actually logged into the app most and top one and two on me and Jamie Sexton. Is that right? That is correct. How yes. many times a day? Ooh. Five or six. Right. Oh. Mm. That's the so when you and Jamie go for a beer, that's the crack, isn't it? Well, every time How many times have you logged in the day? Have you been in this week? When, well, when Jamie goes to get the rounds, yeah. you're log in, log in, log in. Well, every time I see a little bit of variance in the, I just email Jeff and say, Jeff, what's going on? What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Very good. Um, 
Well, I'll come to, I might, um, well, we've got a cash ISA question here. It's a very good question from Paul, who's written in to say, my wife and I each have a cash ISA, which will be maturing this time next year. But with current interest rates uh, on offer from uh, from banks being relatively low, uh, should I be moving into an investment ISA uh, going forward? So it might be just worth touching on cash, first of all, Jeff. Maybe just talk, if you wouldn't mind, around uh, where interest rates are relative to, say, inflation and, and what that means if you're stuck in yeah. cash before we get on to, yeah, to it's Paul's a, question. It's a, it's, a, it's a good starting point for to, to think about it in the sense that we know where interest rates are, so global policy rates are exceptionally low by any form of the imagination. Mm. So might as well think about zero in, in the UK, zero in the US and negative in Europe. So that gives you a, a starting point for where rates are. So effectively you can't earn anything from an interest perspective. I think Neil's got some ideas on where you can pick up interest in terms of various different banks that are out there and things like that. But even allowing for that, um, you're still challenged with inflation, where inflation is today. So inflation, if we want to think about two, two and a half percent, mm. very low interest rates, your real return is effectively negative. So cash sitting in the bank isn't going to, to grow in it yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. That said, there is the opportunity to earn something on that, but then you have to think about the risk that goes with that. Mm. And taking a little bit of incremental risk within your investment portfolio will offer the opportunity to have have enhanced that return yeah. over over time. I think the rates are very extremely low at the moment, what Jeff's just said. I mean, you know, I had a look at online last night and you're getting anything between 0.5 and 0.75. Um, normally you're tied in for around two years for a fixed ISA. You probably get about one percent max on that, mm. as Jeff's just said. If you if you throw in inflation in there, you're really sort of in a negative, negative markets and not really doing anything for your money at all. Um, we have these conversations with clients all the time in the central advice team. Um, a lot of people are you know dismayed with these levels of you know what you're getting for your money you return, um, and it's just you know speak to an advisor, um, do some research yourself, see what's out there. Um, but you know typically. Um, you, you, if you if you're invested, you've got that opportunity to make a little bit mm. more money or more return on what you've got. Um, but the rates are extremely low at the moment, um, and like Jeff said, you're not really getting anything yeah. um, from a growth point of view. Uh, and just compare that, if you would, to the say the balanced portfolio. Yeah. What what would that what would that have done over the last yeah, say twelve months? If, if you think about it, I suppose I like to think about it more on an annualized basis over mm -hmm. the longer term. And if we think about what on an annualized basis the the, the balanced portfolio has done, it's done or done on around six percent on an annual basis yeah. since inception. So that gives you a, a comparison at least to work mm. with in terms of the rates that, that Neil's just highlighted there, but also what we're thinking about in terms of real rates if you just sit in cash. So mm. a negative return versus yeah. a positive return, which yeah. when you think about you know, 6% over the long term, if one is able to, to continue to do that, um, you can think about doubling money over the course of 12 to 14 years. So mm. that's, that's an important mm. um, aspect to think about. It's very much about compounding. Yeah. and the role of compounding within savings. That's not something that you're getting in cash. You're effectively negatively compounding yeah. um, because of the, the real rate effect that you yeah. get I mean, we, we always, the example I think we always use on the podcast, which is a great one to explain it, is that, you know something which costs £100 today. Mm -hmm. If you had £100 in, in, a, in a cash ISA or in the bank, yep. you could afford that item today, but in a year's time, that's going to cost £102. Yep. Uh, but your hundred pound will still be a hundred pounds, so you won't be able to afford it in a year's time. So, yeah. you know, you're getting getting ahead of inflation is obviously the key. And uh, sorry, no, no, go, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say that's what you know, we we talk about thinking of things in real terms, and that's that's mm -hmm. obviously after adjusting for inflation. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's it's a hard concept to to think about. Yeah. We you know, we kind of think about inflation. Oh, that's prices going up. We don't think about that in the context of savings going down. Yeah, and if you you sort of try and think about it in that real sense mm -hmm. you then you get a feel for how your value of your money is yeah changing. and I think it's an opportunity for you to maybe speak to uh, an advisor get some advice and um, talk about risk versus reward um, mm -hmm. a lot of people in, including my family over the years you know you talk about oh you know stocks and shares ice and they, they come up with oh I don't want to be invested in shares you know because they're really volatile and they go up and down it's not like that at all mm -hmm. you know we talk about diversification we talk about the portfolios how your money is spread out um, and we can have a conversation about risk and reward, and you know, um, you know, a lot of people after that are, you know, uh, in a greater position to, to make those decisions. I think it's a it's a good point to highlight in the sense that there is that perception of risk, and that people suddenly think, well, I'm all 100% invested in in equities. 
that's not what mm -hmm. we're about at True Potential. Mm -hmm. It's very much about using the opportunity yeah. that's presented by multi-asset. And, and in that respect, it's no different than people's pension, right? Everyone's got a pension, and their pension is invested, and it's you know, it's exposed to the Correct. same you know yeah. risk or, 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 or balanced risk, as it were. So uh, no different to that. But people wouldn't be fearful of they just sort of trust that it's, it's okay and, and you know, maybe you take the same Do you get questions a lot about this uh, often, on the phone? Uh, very often. We always um, recommend that you know, a client would speak to an advisor. Um, if a client were to you know transfer uh, an investment mm -hmm. over, it's very simple. We've got a unique feature on the client site where you can transfer an investment within a matter of minutes mm -hmm. um, and then we can certainly update you throughout the transfer process. Um, but it is a, a quite a common query we get yeah. from the team. Yeah. Well, it links in again with a question we've got from... Kevin, who is, it's, it's along the same lines, I've got a cash ISA, the interest rate has gone down to 0.01%. Um, I mean, how on earth you spend 0.01% anyway, I've got no idea, <laughs> but uh, what would you suggest I do to give me a better re return for my money? I mean, maybe it's that point about speaking to an advisor, if you like to get the overall view, because maybe you should look at your investments or your, your, your wealth in the round, yeah. um, but, but certainly if you're getting 0.01%, I mean, I should say, by the way, you know, people do need a little bit of access to quick cash you can get your hands on if the boiler yeah. breaks or whatever, fair enough. But when you're getting that level of interest, you know, a rainy day fund is one thing, but if you're serious about growing your money, you're not going to do it on 0.01%. And I suppose that's the starting point, isn't it? It's going and getting advice, mm. getting looking at your whole situation and then planning around that because yeah. we all need a cash pot sitting somewhere for yeah. for the rainy day fund when, when yeah. as you say, the boiler goes or something goes wrong. But yeah. You know, advice has to be the starting point. Mm. And if, if clients want to make those own decisions to invest themselves, you know, you can go onto TP Investor site. There's a lot of information on there where you can about the portfolios. It asks you about, you know, do you have an emergency fund? It asks you all these questions. Um, but yeah, um, Aslim is quite right. If there's queries that come in from a customer care point of view, they come up to the advisor and say, would you like to speak to an advisor? Yes, I would. Um, and we take them through the diversification. We take them through risk and reward and, and also what they've got and recommend, you know, as Jeff has quite rightly said, have that emergency fund, you know, that, that one for if the boiler breaks or if the if the something to do with the roof or, you know, what have you. But yeah, have that have that money safe and then what else have you got that you wish to invest? But them 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 rates are very low at the moment. Um, yeah. you know, you're looking at one percent if if you could get one percent. If you can get yeah. 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 Which Tip. might well be on like an introductory rate or something which yeah, Maybe not even for the long term. They're normally fixed in. You you know, you, if you want an easy <coughs> access, you're probably looking at something about 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Mm -hmm. You know, which again, if you if you throw an inflation in there, it's it's very negative. Yeah, I think on the going back to the app, uh, Muslima as well. On the yeah, you know, within the app, you can see of course what your goal is, where you want to get to, whether it's t for a purchase or just some other idea you've got, and you can see if you're on track. And then yeah. when you when you look at the effect, as Jeff was saying, of the compound interest and in those little small amounts. Uh, the effect you can have on closing your gap, you're never going to close the gap on these kind of cash rates. But I think maybe that's a good visual representation of the value investing that people can see when they log into the app. You know, they can see whether they're on course and yeah, and the certainly. difference little uh, little contributions make now and again. Yeah, certainly. Um, what's great about the team is we do have a, a unique team that offered client site demonstrations. Mm. So if at any time you've got any questions about the app, um, any sort of a, um, of the graphs or any features, feel free to sort of give us a call. We'd be more than happy to sort of offer a tailored demonstration um, over a screen share where you can mm. see a member of the team on camera, feel a bit more comfortable and it would be a lot more personal to um, yeah. whoever needs it. And people can get in touch just through yes, the app, certainly. they can just click and yeah, drop you a message, message or, or use the web chat option um, yeah. or give us a call. We'd be more than happy to. Brilliant. Good to know. Right, let's get into a slightly different topic now. We've got a question here from Buddy who says, are there any, well, can you talk me through the charges around the true potential investments? Let's take a kind of, you know, let's, let's go with one of your portfolios, Jeff. What would be the typical charges that Buddy and others would see on, yeah, on so that investment? I think there's, there's a number of levels to, to to answer that question from. And if we think about it, just at the, at the, at the portfolio level, mm. there is there is one OCF effectively is there, and it's around 80 basis points if we think about the balance fund. So that's the that's effectively the, the sticker price if one wants to think about it yeah. from that perspective. Very clear, very transparent within that. There isn't any additional or hidden charges around the investment mm -hmm. side of things. I think the other thing from an investment side that's really important to, to get across from a charging perspective is that there is no uh, DFM fee, no discretionary fund management fee mm -hmm. attached to the management that which we provide as, as true potential. 
and that's a differentiator relative to a large number of our competitors. Yeah. Now then, we can get into thinking about what are the other charges that one might see, but that's related to the platform, it's related to advice. So on the investment side, it's very clear, very transparent about yeah. what the cost of the end client will pay. Mm. The other thing to, to note there, I think, is really about the, the scale of and growth that we've experienced mm. within the true potential portfolios and how that has been used to, to lower those costs over over yeah. time as well. So using scale to the advantage of the, the client yeah. as well, which is really important. Um, from our point of view. Mm. I think this is one of the things that does, depending on which firm you're dealing with, often put people off a little bit from investing because they're, they're wary of a lot of hidden charges or if I want to do this, does that incur a charge? And what you're saying is there's none of that with True Potential. It's a very straightforward, you know, there is a, a, churn, a charge on the, the fund yeah. uh, for the for the platform as well. And then obviously if you're using it, advi- getting advice, there's a charge yeah. there. But, but that's it. It's, it's very straightforward it and is. nothing hidden at all. Very transparent. And I also would probably point out the... An example of, of such as a hidden charge would be something like drawdown, uh, where ours is, you know, we don't charge for that, uh, but a lot of SIP providers or a lot of personal <coughs> pension providers do, um, and they are hidden charges, not really highlighted. When people come to take their income, mm-hmm. there is that drawdown charge, um, which we typically don't charge, yeah. um, you know, so it's, it is very transparent. Yeah. When you mentioned DFM charge, it might be just worth touching on what that is, what that means, yeah. but uh, and, and when we don't... No, we, charge we, we, we don't charge a, a, a DFM fee and really what that is is a fee that other providers may or may not choose to put on top of it for, for active management within the, the, the strategy. So the changes that we're making to the portfolios on a monthly basis mm-hmm. is something that one could charge for very much from the, the outset on the, in the foundation of, of True Potential. That wasn't something that, that the business wanted to do. It's never been there and for us, Going back to the earlier question around sort of cost compounding, if you think about from an investment perspective, if you think about costs that have to come out, that eats away at your return. Mm. So for any incremental cost that you don't have, it's a positive. If we look at sort of the marketplace and think about where that DFM charge could be, could be anything between 80 basis points, 120 basis points compound that up over time yeah. Yeah. that's that's yeah. quite a material yes. erosion yeah. into to your your value mm-hmm. creation so clear we don't we don't charge it others do charge it but it's very much our ethos to be very simple mm-hmm. in terms of, and, and, and very open in yeah. terms of those those charging structures out there and as, as Neil said there's no drawdown charge the pension wrapper charge as well there, there's not one of that either and that's an important thing yeah. for, for people to be aware of yeah Let's, uh, let's get a question from Alan then, So, because it links in with pensions and with drawdown that you mentioned, Neil. And Alan's asking, is it is it wise to scale down risk just before you're about to retire on a drawdown pension, or should you keep the risk where it is and maybe then take some advice later on? I guess this is a question that comes up quite a lot if you're maybe in the, in a few, a few years out from retirement, maybe five years, is that the moment to start going down the risk level and, and, and playing it a bit safer, or...? Yeah, potentially. I mean, it, it all depends on the client circumstances. Every individual client has individual circumstances. Mm-hmm. Um, typically, what pensions have done over the years is they've typically gone, um, you know, five years before retirement into some sort of lifestyle fund uh, where they lower the risk, maybe from an equity point of view. Um, and, you know, that, that has been because the client has reached or is reaching that retirement mm-hmm. age. Um, it's all about having a conversation with um, your advisor, um, seeing what portfolio you're in at the moment, seeing... Um, maybe he's reassessing your attitude to risk, um, which we typically do on an annual basis with clients, um, and seeing where they are, seeing if they've got any other investments. But yeah, it can be a personal conversation, and it's all related to the client's circumstances. They may say, well, I don't want to actually retire then, I've decided I want to work an- another couple of years. Um, okay, well, we'll annually review that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it is beneficial for clients, yeah. But typically, it's probably you do move towards retirement, you would probably think, or let's have a look at what portfolio we have. I might want to reduce that risk as um, as I'm approaching retirement. Yeah. It's probably also important to think about other sources of income that one can use because of the the, the protection that effectively a pension has and whether you want to use other sources or other pots of money yeah. as you're, you're getting to that, yeah. that stage before thinking about you know, touching even the pension. Yeah. I think one of the things that you know, we all tend to, to forget is people are living longer yeah. and your pension is going to have to look after you for, for a lot longer. And you know, if you think about life expectancy, you're probably into 82, 85 uh, for male, female in the in the UK. That's mm. that's a long time. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you decide to to start retiring at 55, yeah. mm-hmm. um, so your pot 
does need to grow. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's just the, the rate that it maybe needs to grow changes. It's, there's probably an education piece, Jeff, around being in the right risk category at the very start as well, because yeah. you know if you, st- if you if you almost you get to the point where you're thinking about going down the risk level, but you're already in at a you know fairly low level, yeah. you've not got far to go. But you know when you're in your twenties and early thirties or whatever, you probably you might want to be uh, taking a bit more risk if it's yeah. you've got thirty years till you're going to need it's that all pension. About your, your tolerance for risk yeah. and your your willingness and ability to to take some risk mm-hmm. to compound at a, at a faster rate, hopefully. Yeah. And you, you, that will change as circumstance changes. Yeah. But it's again back to that concept that starting to save early, mm-hmm. starting to use the power of compounding to yeah. to help you certainly yeah. gives you a better decision when you come to that mm-hmm. point to decide. What am I going to do with, yeah. with my pension as I approach yeah. retirement? And I think to your point, Neil, as well, is just getting some advice early on to explain what all this means because risk is it's an, you know it's a concept that, as you say, people have maybe preconceptions of it, but under having someone explain what it all means and yeah. what, it, what it all means, not as much today, but what it means over 20, 30 years, that's a quite an important part of the conversation. It is, it is, and we, we do get a lot of um, you know comments back and compliments back to say that when they've had, or clients have had chats with their advisors, you understand a hell of a lot more mm-hmm. um, because the what they thought happened or what they thought they were invested in is you know sometimes totally different from what they are invested in, um, and you know the shares example was a great example of you know we don't invest a hundred percent in those equities. Um, oh, okay, well it's spread out, um, but yeah, I mean clients who we typically get a lot of um, calls coming in custom care, um, okay. people who are approaching retirement and say yeah. I'm in this portfolio. Can I have a review, please? I want to mm-hmm. look at what I'm in and what I'm invested in. Mm-hmm. And also, my circumstances have changed. Yeah. Um, you know, can I speak to an advisor? And, and it comes up quite a lot to yeah. risk on the calls and stuff. Certainly, sometimes in, in cases it tends to be six months to a year before they want to start drawing down. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do get them throughout the year yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing is when we, we talk about risk, we kind of perceive it in the negative. Mm-hmm. It's all mm-hmm. about the downside, whereas risk could also be equated with opportunity mm-hmm. yes. and you're giving yourself the opportunity to earn a return yeah. that will be useful mm-hmm. in, in, in your retirement and that's I think the other mindset I suppose that we have to think about yeah. opportunity as, as opposed to the negative that comes with risk mm-hmm. or often comes with people's association with risk. Yeah. Let's, um, let's move on to Andrew's question. He's got an ISA allowance story. Might be one for you, uh, Muslima. This. Uh, Andrew says, at the start of the tax year, I put my tax-free allowance into my ISA and then I immediately start saving over the next 12 months. Can I transfer this into my ISA at the start of the tax year? Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, so with the allowance, you've got the, the options, again, to speak to an advisor if you would like to use your sort of general investment um, account as well um, to use your ISA allowance. We've got a unique feature, again, on the client site where you can use sort of the um, feature to transfer over your remaining al- allowance or the full mm-hmm. £20,000. Um, or you can just simply impulse save into the, the investment. Um, it typically takes between sort of three and five days to, to add funds, and it's yeah. a very quick option. If you've got your card details saved, it only takes a matter of minutes. Yeah. Um, to, to fill that. And I think if you've filled up your ISA allowance for a year and you save an, an additional amount, mm-hmm. you can ISA up that amount on the year after and you know put that in your next year's allowance. Yeah. Yeah. So so in practical terms, you would you'd ma- you, so the ISA allowance obviously twenty thousand yeah. pounds each yeah. each year. So you could you, you you would use that allowance, let's say, and then you could save it in like a general investment account that you were saying. You yes. could do that on a on a regular basis, yeah. monthly or whatever yeah. suits. And at the end of the year, when your when your ISA allowance refreshes. Yes, you can pull that across. What you do is you'd almost put the ISA umbrella over that that, that yeah. other amount, and mm-hmm. that would again would would use your allowance um, for that year. Yeah, yeah. We've got some smart investors with mm. these questions, yeah. haven't we? There, yeah. thinking this. It's all good, all good stuff. I like it. Right, Neil, I'm going to stick with you for Ian's question because it's all about pension tax relief. I know it's one of your favourite topics. Oh, I love it. You do like a bit of tax relief, don't you? When you can get your hands on it. Um, so Ian says, I have a pension investment, and I've already taken my tax-free lump sum. I'm currently still working, so is there any point still investing in my pension pot? Yes, uh, it does depend, actually. I mean, you've got um, a couple of allowances there. Um, You've got, um, if you've taken your tax-free lump sum, say you've taken your full 25%, uh, but you're not currently taking an income from that pension, um, you can still contribute up to 100% of your salary, um, or £40,000, into that. If you've taken an income from that pension, um, because of the new flexible arrangements now, you're still reduced to the money purchase annual allowance, which is £4,000. Mm-hmm. Um, whichever situation you're in, um, you can still contribute. So yeah, you could be taking an income, put in a lower amount of £4,000, or 
if you've only tax uh, access your tax free cash you can still contribute up to 100% of your salary or £40,000. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people who uh, maybe have taken tax free cash to, I don't know, um, pay off some debt or maybe pay off the mortgage, um, they still might want to put some money into that pension. Uh, and the benefits of that are obviously is, you know, growth. Um, you may not retire for, you know, mm -hmm. for, a, for yeah. a couple of years and yeah. still be working so you can put that in. There's an interesting thing in, in, in my head, at least anyway, about this idea that people, this, this idea of the tax free uh, lump sum that you're allowed, this this 25%, that as soon as you can get your hands on it, some people just take it and let's go and you know have that round the world cruise. Now, obviously, all subject to advice and people's own personal goals, but j almost that just because you can, maybe just doesn't mean you should, especially if you just, yeah, you know, if you have a bit of ca money in a cash ISA or another ISA, mm -hmm. which might be best used for, if you like, small purchases or having a holiday or whatever, maybe maybe leaving it where it is, you don't have to take Correct. it, do you, at, the, at that moment? Correct, and it's, you know, what Jeff said before, there's benefits of leaving it in the pension. Mm -hmm. um, and also as well, if you take your, 20, your, your full tax-free cash, 25%, it has a bit of an impact on, obviously, a, a massive impact on the mm -hmm. fund and what you could potentially get back from that. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a conversation that comes up a lot. Also as well, which is really funny from an advice point of view, a lot of people, when they take the pension benefits, they think they have to take the 25% tax-free cash. Yeah. They think they have to take it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, no, you can leave it invested. You can take you know, a, a smaller amount. Or, you know. um, but yeah, it, we can show you what effect it has on your pension fund. Uh, and also look at your other assets. You, you're quite right. You might have you know, some money in an ISA that you wish to take out and, you, uh, and leave that in. Because also as well, leaving the money in your pension mm -hmm. um, is outside of your estate from an IHT point of view. And you notice the increase in houses, house yeah. prices, and obviously personal wealth. And a lot of people have saved a lot of money under lockdown as well over the last two years. Um, you know, there's an incredible amount of savings out there. Mm -hmm. um, typically, what we've just talked about in lower cash ISAs and, yeah. you know, fixed yeah. deposit funds and that sort mm -hmm. of stuff. But, yeah, it's it's a conversation we have a lot. Um, yeah, you don't have to take it. I'm guessing tax-free lump sum comes up a lot. Yes, a lot. Um, <laughs> several calls a day, several messages. Um, and a lot of the questions are certainly around taking the full amount. So we always, yeah. again, recommend that. You do speak to an advisor, mm -hmm. and it's almost an, a very edu it's a very educational process mm -hmm. for our clients, um, and we take back a lot I've, from our team. Yeah, I think it's obviously because you we, we work in this industry, mm -hmm. so we, we know. Um, but when you when you're actually talking to clients who do different occupations, it's like, oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't realise I didn't have to take my full tax free cash. Yeah. And it's all about an education and speaking to an advisor. Are there any typical uh, things that come up for people that what they want to use their tax free? Um, cruises. Is it? Yeah, the yeah. cruise. Yeah. yeah to call a day before the birthday or on their birthday okay. um, and just talk about the Caribbean cruise. Right, uh, so yeah. cruises are very popular. Oh, well, there you go. go I was just going to say, it's, uh, I suppose it's also the, the beauty of the system as well, that is we can show people the picture. Yeah. Here's the, the impact of taking X out. This is what happens to the goal that you might mm -hmm. have. And seeing it visually is often the one thing that maybe brings it home to a lot of yeah. people that actually if I take that 25%, that's what it's going to do to my, my pot overall yeah. and just seeing it there might might make people think differently about mm -hmm. it because there, it, it does change dramatically mm. the growth profile of mm. your overall pension pot yeah having, would, a, having, having a conversation about tax as well you know it's like mm -hmm. why do you want to take it from there your pension when you could take it from there that's it yeah understanding what's the right what's if you like the best place to yeah, yeah. Do it. It's, where it's, would you go on a cruise jeff if you were doing a just to go on a cruise where would you like to go? Have you been on one? I, no, I haven't been on one. If it was to go on one, I'd like to go to South America, oh, down nice. around uh, yeah. Argentina. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, uh, bo booze cruises don't count, Neil. You <laughs> no, can't talk about that. Yeah. We don't want to know about that. South, South America. Oh, you can go together. Take you could do it. Well, you see, you, you could use you could use Neil's ice there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, he's, he's got some posh trainers for those five k runs, but um, yeah. there's a lot of money left in there, yeah. so you could uh, you're looking shout you to a cruise. Um, let's move on quick. Uh, Mike has got, oh, well, it's another one about pension tax relief. I see it's a, it's a hot topic. It is a favourite. Um, I've topped up my pension by £100 a month, um, and I was wondering if the £20 tax relief from the government will show us £120. So, yes, um, as I mentioned before, there's a, a feature on the client site um, where you can see the transaction history. Um, just bear in mind, it takes up to eight weeks for tax relief to show. So if you don't see it, don't be alarmed. Um, tax relief will just pop up as tax relief from the transaction history. So you can just yeah. search tax relief and it will come up as the £20 rather than £120. Um, again, feel free to sort of call in for the team and we'll, more be, we'll be more than happy to sort of yeah. guide you through the, the process of yeah. finding that. I've seen that on mine. I've seen you know, your pension contribution goes in and then, yeah, you're right, a couple of weeks later you see the thing and you think, oh, that's good, that's an extra little bit... Uh, 
working for me. Thank you, Boris. We should remember it's not Boris's money, it's our money, by the way, just <laughs> so we should make that point, you know. It's, <laughs> it's not the government's money, it's ours. Uh, but yes, Again, it does show. That's, I suppose another reason why advice is important, mm -hmm. because you can get that incremental yeah. Yeah. contribution yeah. in terms of the tax relief. If you want to think, yeah. it, is, it is a contribution, mm -hmm. yeah. but it's important that people are very much aware that mm -hmm. saving into your pension can give you that option, mm -hmm. where saving in other ways doesn't give you that option. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah correct. Good, good to know it's all, it's all there. Um, where should we go next? Let's have a question from Lisa. So when I turn 55, Lisa's saying I can take 25% of my pension tax free. However, can I take a smaller amount, say 10%, goes to your point earlier? Yes. The so-called Battenberg, I think, approach, isn't this or not? <laughs> yes, you can, take, um, you can take a lower tax free cash amount. Um, and you know it's it's the similar conversation what we're having before just you don't have to take that full 25% tax free um, and we just say do you need the full 25% no I only need 10% what's it for well just take a smaller amount um, and then you can be quite clever by using the additional or the remaining tax free amount mm -hmm. um, you know so you don't pay tax moving forward mm -hmm. um, from an income point of view as well so yeah again you know um, you, you can certainly not take the full 25%, you can take as, as, as much as you want, as long as it doesn't go over that. Yeah. But if you don't need it, um, don't why take, take it? it? Yeah. Correct. So 10% and then Lisa's saying perhaps another 15% later, as long as I don't go over the 25. Yeah. And Lisa's also saying, can I can I also leave it as late as when I'm 65 to take any of it? Can you actually leave it later than that? Mm -hmm. Is there any, any time limit on when you can use yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, you can you can, you can can access it when you, you know. Um, the, the benefits of doing that as leaving it later is obviously it's remaining within that portfolio and mm -hmm. it's growing. Um, so if you don't require it, um, you know, it's going to achieve the extra growth in that time. Mm -hmm. We've got a, Chris, a question in here from Chris, who's asking about the rewards that True Potential has offered. And um, maybe just explain, if you wouldn't mind, Muslima, what are the what we mean by rewards for people who perhaps aren't aware of it. So it's a feature that's available on the support app for sort of, um, mm -hmm. those who have a workplace pension or those who have opened an investment directly with True Potential. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a feature that launched um, early on in the year and mm -hmm. it's available to a large number of, of clients where you can sort of get a cash back for some, for some great retailers. Mm -hmm. I've used it myself and it's great. Um, on an average, it takes about three months um, to see sort of your rewards. That's purely due to sort of the merchant taking up to three months. Yeah. Um, it can be quite a while due to sort of, you know, um, merchants going over the, the refund process. Um, but once you do see it, you can select your sort of true potential investments and choose to sort of yeah. invest the money into yeah, the There's quite a investment. few retailers on there. So as an example, I think ASOS is on there as well, yeah. a lot of online shopping. So if you go through um, the, 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 the investor app, Click which retailer you want, and then obviously, as Muslima said, yeah. that cashback is going to come back into your account. Yeah, I've heard that Just Eat, uh, Just Eat is, yeah. is, a, is a popular Just one. Easy. I know it's on there. Yeah. I've heard that yeah. it's exceedingly popular yeah. uh, uh, with Jeff. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, but no, Chris was asking just the, the time it takes for it then to, to reappear. And there's a, you know, of course, when, you, when you're working with third parties, you know, there's, there's, you've got to factor that in as well. So it will come through yes. uh, and it will appear so all in good tend time. To, tend, they tend to get processed at the end of the month. So if you are someone who's made a Just Eat purchase early end of the month, you'll have to wait towards sort of three months yeah. um, to, to get that process. But, it will, but so. it will show through. But I think it's a great. I think uh, it's an important thing. Is you're, we are beholden to them. Yeah. Processing it and, and bringing it back in, it does yeah. take time. But it will. But it, it will, will get there eventually. And I think it's a great thing. I mean, if you know, for the extra click to go through. So you know, tonight we should maybe just think. People watching the podcast, do you fancy tonight either going on ASOS, doing a bit of late night yeah. shopping, or, mm -hmm. yeah, or ordering, pizza or something ordering like that, that takeaway? Yeah. That's right, yeah. Jeff. I mean, you know, there's yeah. more than just pizzas you can get there. Well, a that, simple couple of clicks is going to give you that cash back, yes. isn't it? So yeah. why not? Why not just do it through yeah. the app? Uh, and and you know, you, you saving a few percent cash back, which then goes in the account. What a friction free, if you like, um, bonus way that when you're tucking into that takeaway or you're trying on that new dress, Neil. Uh, from ASOS, you can you know you can you can think well that's great it's topped up my pension at the same time or it's all working in my future so I look good today but I feel even better in the future. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> and nothing more on that. <laughs> um, right. Safety and security. Moving swiftly on. Jones got a question. Um, Jones asking, uh, how do I know my pension is safe with true potential? So, I mean. Obviously, you could look at Jeff and think, well, Jeff's, Jeff's, a, Jeff's an honest, honourable-looking bloke. But, I mean, this idea that, you know, a lot of people are investing a lot of money into their investments uh, with us and with other firms as well. And, you know, we're, 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 we can sometimes, I guess, feel a little bit remote. I mean, the reason why we do these podcasts and do all this is to explain a bit more about what's going on. But reassure Joan that it's all, it's all good. 
I suppose there's, there's various different ways that we can, can think about the, the safety of one's pension. Mm -hmm. But clearly, to, to, to start from the very start, if we think about how the true potential portfolios themselves mm -hmm. are constructed, they're constructed based on underlying uh, funds. So those are underlying OICs that they have uh, their own uh, regulatory structure that, yeah. that sit around them and are completely ring-fenced from true potential. So if we think about it from that perspective, the assets are, are ring-fenced and are held off in regulatory yeah. uh, protection, if that's the right way to describe it. So they are distinct, they're owned by the underlying client, they're not something that are owned mm. by true potential. Mm. <clears throat> and I think that's an important distinction for, for everybody to be aware of. The, the regulatory structures that sit around pensions are there to protect the individual, yeah. and the way in which we provide it allows that protection to be afforded as mm. well. So mm. I, I it, from my perspective, it is the, I suppose the, they are as safe as they can be yeah. from, from uh, that and regulatory deal, perspective. Well, I mean, Neil, you've, you've spent a lot of your time, uh, many years dealing with regulators and, 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 and adhering to the highest possible standards there are, which we do. And you can speak firsthand. You've got you've probably got the scars on your back of, of of, of how close the regulators do, uh, you know, monitor what goes on and, yeah. and make sure we're, yeah. we're top we're top of the game. Yeah, of course, and it's r rightly so as well. I think the regulators are concerned with um, firms and you know their profitability, that sort of stuff. The, the they had a particular look at platforms to make sure that platforms were profitable, um, and that's conversations that you have with clients. Mm -hmm. um, clients are concerned that the money is going to be safe. Um, you know, we don't want the years, if you remember the years ago when people were queuing up outside Northern Rock, that situation again, but the likelihood of that happening is, is very, very small. Um, but profitability in platforms is a big topic at the moment, and quite rightly so. Um, people want to know that the money is safe. And I think, obviously, with, with true potential, um, you know, the, the, the money is ex extremely safe. And if we look back to last year in terms of, if you think about platforms, you think about resilience. Mm -hmm. Last year, the volatility that we saw in, in markets there was no issues at all with mm. the, the, the our platform in terms of mm -hmm. how it continued mm -hmm. to, to yeah. function all the way through that. We can look at the press from then and we know that there were others that were, were challenged and hence why I think probably the regulators decided to have a little bit of a look at platform resilience and think about that. Mm. You know, well, How is the, the consumer being appropriately served in, yeah. in, in that environment, in that stressed environment, mm. probably is the way to think about it. It's, it's probably worth adding as well that People might not know how many advisors there are, financial advisors there are in the UK, about 20,000 is the answer. And one in every four chooses to work with True Potential you know, and trusts us to look after them, their businesses, and also their clients, more importantly, I suppose, as well. So that is a vote of confidence in itself, mm -hmm. that they see us as being a firm that is you know, absolutely transparent and open and professional and does it the way it should be done. Yeah. And as I say, we do these podcasts, these videos, you can subscribe and see an awful lot more. We we absolutely as transparent as we as we we can be, and we we obviously want want to be as well. So um, I think John can be reassured. Yes, definitely. Good. Well, I think that's um. It's I've enjoyed today's Q and A. Uh, there's been a lot of great questions in there. We'll do some more. Uh, do get in touch, by the way, if you've got a question. You might have picked up something today on the podcast, or perhaps you've been something bubbling away that you've maybe read in the papers or seen on the news and wondering how that affects you and and all that. We'd love to hear from you. So do get in touch. You can email in. You can. You can uh, contribute a question through our social media channels as well, and uh, and we love to hear from you. So thanks very much, everyone. Muslim, I hope you enjoyed your first you. uh, yeah. your debut on the podcast. Are you going to come back? Certainly. You're not going to do a kneel and sit there all week waiting for us to come back next week, <laughs> are you? And we'll find you again. Uh, but it's been good to have you on. Neil, are you going to make it three in a row, Hadrick? Hopefully, yes. Apparently, we were having a discussion last night with well with Jamie Sexton, and he says thanks for um, standing in for me. Oh. Um, oh. So, um, but I think they wanted somebody on the podcast with a bit more technical expertise. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Charisma, I think is the charisma. charisma. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm in trouble now. <laughs> um, any plans for the weekend, then, Jeff? I, I always like to know what you get up to on a weekend. Wedding anniversary. So. Oh well. Yeah, so we'll have a bit of a. A barbecue tomorrow for that, I think. Yes. Oh, well, uh, it's been full of birthdays and uh, massages and wedding uh, <laughs> anniversaries on the podcast day. I feel like we should have had a candle or something. We should have. We should have. Or got, yeah. the, got the banners out. Well, yeah. congratulations. Thank and you. I hope you have a lovely, a lovely weekend, Neil. Are you, are you, any more 5Ks planned? No, no. Maybe just go out on the bike. I've just bought a new bike, a new mountain yeah. bike, so I might, might go out on that. Um, the last trip that I did do on the mountain bike um, I resulted in me walking six mile home because I couldn't get the chain back on. Oh. Um, <laughs> so that was that was entertaining. Uh, but no no plans. I think I'm going to have a chilled one and watch a bit of football, I think. Good. Excellent. 
What's Nina? What are you doing this weekend? Um, I'm sorting donations for a charity a trustee for. Um, Very good. So Afghan refugees who are coming to England. Yes. Um, so that's my weekend. Well, Brilliant. So oh well, that's that's good. good. That's uh, a nice a nice thing they end on. Well, yeah. well done with that one. Great. Well, look, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up. So thanks very much to Neil, Muslima, Jeff. Thanks very much for your contributions as well today. Uh, as I mentioned, um, lots more of this kind of content on our YouTube channel, and we'd love to hear from you as well. So please do hit the subscribe button, and uh, you, know, you can send your questions in. You can find all that great content on there now. So we'll be back next week. So until then, we'll say bye for now. Subscribing to the True Potential YouTube channel is quick and easy. Simply go to the channel on your desktop or through the YouTube app on your phone, and click the subscribe button. You can then press the notification bell symbol if you wish to be notified as and when new videos are released. Doing this is a great way to keep yourself updated with market developments and personal finance insights. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed and we look forward to continuing to help you do more with your money.